Hello everyone, this is Teacher Juvie and I will be your guide for today's lesson. This time, you will continue solving a word problem to develop your critical thinking skills. After going through this lesson, you are expected to apply your learnings in finding the GCF and LCM through solving a real-life word problems involving GCF and LCM of the given numbers. Okay, so let us read and analyze this word problem. There are two bells in the school. The bell 1 is for the grade 1 to 3, while the bell 2 is for the grade 4 to 6. The bell 1 and 2 are rang, once every 30 minutes and the other or bell B at every 50 minutes. If they are rang together at 7 o'clock a.m., at what time they will be next rang together for their recess? Okay, so sabi dito sa problem, may dalawang bell sa school. Yung unang bell ay para sa grade 1 hanggang grade 3. And yung pangalawang bell naman ay para naman sa grade 4 hanggang grade 6. Yung bell, nagra-rang siya every, uh, once every 30 minutes. Samantalang yung other bell o yung, yung bell B ay nagra-rang every 50 minutes. Kapag sila ay nagra-rang together or tumutunog ng 7 a.m., ngayon, what time naman sila susunod na magbebel ulit ng sabay pag para sa recess nila? In order for us to solve the problem, we're going to use Polya's four-step problem-solving method. We're in... The first step is we understand the problem by answering the questions what is asked and what is or the given. Then second step is to plan. We're going to plan on how will we solve the problem. And the third step is solve. So how is the solution done? And the fourth step is to check and look back. So you're going to state your answer completely. So let's start with the first step, which is to understand the problem by answering the questions, what is asked in the problem? So based on the given problem, we are looking for the time that the bell rang together. So inahanap natin yung oras kung kailan ulit magkasabay natutunog yung dalawang bell. Okay, so next question is what is or are the given? So, the given numbers are the bell A are rang after 30 minutes while the bell B are rang after 50 minutes. So, kung ano yung nakikita yung given doon sa problem, yun yung ilalagay nyo sa what is or are the given. So, we can now proceed on the second step which is plan. So, how will the problem be solved? So, we can solve the problem by finding the LCM or the least common multiple. Okay, so the third step on Polya's problem-solving method is solve. So, how is the solution done? So, we can solve the problem through listing method. So, paano ba natin ginagawa ang listing, listing method? So, we have the given numbers 30 and 50. So, we list all the multiples of 30. So, skip counting natin yung 30. So, we have 30, 60, 90, 120, and 150. So, stop muna tayo sa 150. So, list naman natin ang multiples ng 50. 50, 100, and 150. Okay. So, kung nakita nyo, napansin nyo na meron tayong Parehong multiples na 150. So, bilugan natin siya. And that 150 will be the least common multiple of 30 and 50. Kasi siya yung una nating nakuhang common, uh, first common multiple sa set ng multiples ng 30 and 50. Okay, so another way of solving this problem is through prime factorization method. So, kukunin natin ang mga prime factors ng 30. Using prime factorization or factor tree method, isip ka ngayon ng factors ng 30. 
So, 5 times 6. Then, i-differentiate mo yung dalawang factors kung siya ba ay prime or composite. Ang 5 is prime, ang 6 ay composite. So, yung 6 ang kailangan nating kunin ang factors. So, the factors of 6 are 2 times 3. 2 and 3 are already prime. So, move na tayo sa prime factorization ng 50. Okay, so think again, factors of 50. So, 5 times 10. Ang 5 is prime and 10 is composite. So, we need to get the factors of 10. The factors of 10 are 2 times 5. After natin makuha ang mga prime factors using factor tree method, we can now write the given number as product of its prime factors. So, the prime factors of 30 are 2 times 3 times 5, while the prime factors of 50 are 2 times 5 times 5. Then, to get the LCM or the least common multiple, kunin natin yung mga prime numbers or prime factors 2, 3, 5, and 5. So, we're going to get the product of 2 times 3 times 5 times 5 to get the LCM of 30 and 50 and that is equal to 150. Okay, so another solution that we can use to find the LCM of the given numbers or to solve the problem is through model or illustration. So if we're going to illustrate the two bells, ang starting niya is yung 7 o'clock a.m. sabay silang nag or tumutunog. Then sabi ang bell 1, tumutunog siya o nagra-rang siya every 30 minutes. So bell 1, so 30, 60 90 and 120 and 150 siya tutunog. Then, yung bell 2, nagrarang siya every 50 minutes. So, uh, 50, 100, and 150. So, nakuha natin ngayon na sabay silang tutunog sa 150 minutes. Then, i-convert natin yung 150 minutes into hours para makuha natin yung exact na oras kung kailan sila tutunog ng magkasabay. Okay, so the fourth step is check and look back. So, uh, since the bell A rang at every 30 minutes and bell B rang at 50 minutes, then the least number of minutes required for the two bells to be rung together is the LCM of 30 and 50. Okay, so from the different solutions that we use, the LCM of 30 and 50 is 150. Therefore, the two bells will be rung together after 150 minutes, which is also equivalent to 2 hours and 30 minutes, since 1 hour is equal to 60 minutes. Okay, so the answer to our problem is both bells will be next rung at 7 a.m. plus 2 hours and 30 minutes. Oh, sa natin nakuha again yung 2 hours and 30 minutes, di ba? Sinove natin ng LCM is 150 minutes and when we convert 150 minutes into hours, that is equivalent to 2 hours and 30 minutes. So, yeah, add natin ngayon dahil nag-start silang mag-bell or sabay silang mag-bell ng 7 o'clock a.m., i-add natin yung 2 hours and 30 minutes. Minutes, so, magbebel ulit sila ng sabay ng 9.30 a.m. Okay, so let's try to solve this problem using the four-step plan and also use the concept of GCF. So, let's read the problem first. A philanthropist would like to donate 96 notebooks, 84 pencils, and 120 pad papers among grade 4 pupils of BTS Elementary School. If he wants to distribute it equally to selected pupils, how many pupils will receive those items and how many of each kind can each pupil get? Okay, so if we're going to translate this, Sabi, may philanthropist daw na gustong mag-donate ng 96 na notebooks, 84 na pencils, and 120 pad papers sa mga grade 4 pupils ng BTS Elementary School. Kung gusto niya daw i-distribute yung mga items ng equally sa piling mag-aaral, ilang pupils ang makaka-receive ng mga items na yon, at ilang items ang mare-receive ng bawat isang pupil.
Okay, so using the first step, we have to understand the problem by answering the questions, what is asked and what are the given numbers. So what is asked in the problem is the number of pupils who will receive those items and the number of items each pupil can get. Then the given numbers are 96 notebooks, 84 pencils, and 120 pad papers. Okay, so next step is plan. Plan on how will the problem be solved. So we can uh, solve the problem by finding the GCF or the greatest common factor of the given numbers. Okay, so third step is solve. So we have different methods in order for us to solve the problem. So we can use listing method, uh, prime factorization method, continuous division, and using model or illustration. So pili lang kayo kung anong method yung para sa inyo ay madaling gamitin para masolve ang isang Okay, so for the solution, I prefer to use the continuous division para masagot natin yung GCF or makuha natin yung GCF ng mga given numbers na 96, 84, and 120. So, pag gagamitin natin ang continuous division, iisip ka ng number na magdi-divide sa 96, 84, and 120 ng walang sobra. Okay, so divisible sila by 2. Then, sulat natin yung sagot or quotient sa ilalim ng given number. So, 96 divided by 2 is 48. 84 divided by 2 is 42. And 120 divided by 2 is 60. Then, continue again the process. So, isip ka uli ng number na magdi-divide sa 48, 42, and 60 na walang sobra. Since sila ay multiple, itong mga numbers na to ay multiple ng 6. So, pwede silang i-divide sa 6. 48 divided by 6 is 8. 42 divided by 6 is 7. And 60 divided by 6 is 10. Okay, so 8, 7, and 10. So, may naiisip ka bang number na pwedeng mag-divide sa 8, 7, and 10? Okay, so wala na. Stop ka na doon. Then, multiply natin itong naka- uh, vertical na numbers, so 2 times 7, at uh, 2 times 6, 2 times 6 is equal to 12. So, the GCF of 96, 84, and 120 is 12. Okay, so for the final step, which is to check and look back, we're going to state our final answer. So, the number of pupils who will receive those items is 12, and the number of items each pupil can get are 8, 7, and 10. So, asan galing tong 8, 7, and 10? Dun sa ating ginawang continuous division, ito yung mga natirang number na wala na tayong maisip na number na pwedeng mag-divide sa kanila. So, ito yung mare-receive na bilang ng mga items, ng mga, ng bilang ng mga items na mare-receive ng mga bata. Again, these are the steps of Polya's four-step method in problem solving. So, the first step is we understand the problem by answering what is asked and what are the given. Then, plan and solve for the solution. And last is check and look back para alam mo kung tama ang iyong sagot. Thanks for watching this video. Hit like if you learned from this video and don't forget to subscribe on my channel. Thank you so much.